Good afternoon and welcome back to beautiful Denver, Colorado. We are midway through day two of Boomy World 2024. Very excited to be joined. My name is Savannah Peterson here with John Furrier. And we have a fabulous guest joining us this afternoon in Matt. Real quick before we get to Matt. John, this afternoon, how are you feeling? Feeling great, got a great energy. Um, the pace of the conference is right perfectly in line with what you want to have. A very intimate crowd here, about 1,000 plus people. Mm -hmm. A lot of customers. So you can yeah. see really people digging in when it's, when people are having intense conversations, you know they're getting into the, uh, into the topics. So it's good. When you see a lot of that going on, you know it's successful. You can tell the business is happening here. Yeah, they're getting some business out of this. And speaking tell. of exciting things, Matt, you've had an incredibly exciting day. Tell us a little bit about your morning. Well, the morning started uh, with the keynote. So I, had a, I, had to do, I got to do a nice cameo in Steve uh, Lucas's keynote where we were unveiling so much stuff. Uh, I was talking specifically about our API management acquisitions, which is extremely exciting. Um, big course, news for okay, me course, today. I mean, let's yeah. face it, like the big show was, was Coach Prime there. That was uh, something else. So I got my picture taken with, with him. Met with uh, some of our best partners, I've analysts. It's just been a whirlwind, but it's been a fantastic, uh, fantastic event so far. So as the CTO and on the product side, Boomi is in the iPass market, integration is a big part of. You're starting to see the AI world spinning in the generative AI world, you're starting to see things get refactored, uh, reset, in some cases net new build outs of new applications as generative as a new category because it's generating stuff. It's not yeah. like pre-programmed database, it's like a bunch of new things. Where's the connection between iPaaS, uh, integration platform as a service, and where Gen AI, AI will pick up? Connect the dots for us because it's, you can leverage a lot of what you have and get net new capabilities and value extraction. Take us, unpack that there's, for us. There's, there's so much to unpack there, because I think what, what we're seeing is that even AI in general, like what is AI, right? So I think we, we can say Gen AI is maybe a little more well-defined, but we, companies are already at various levels of adoption of good old-fashioned machine learning, mm -hmm. right? And then along comes generative AI. So the reality for a lot of our customers, a lot of companies out there is like, they're just spread across this spectrum of, this historical spectrum of all these technologies and they're like, wait a minute, we were just trying to catch up on this and now you give us this. I think that um, for us, and we, we've gone through this process too, because because yeah. like there's lots of different ways to look at AI. There's how we use AI to drive more productivity in our platform, how we use AI for our own company and the ways other companies do it. But we really looked hard at, wait, what is our role in this whole ecosystem of Gen AI? If we put, if we put ourselves in our customers' shoes, what, how can we help them get the most value out of this? Because there's so much noise, there's so much hype, yeah. it really is groundbreaking, mind-bending stuff. How can we add value there? And there is a huge role. I think that um, even in the Gen AI ecosystem, which is evolving more quickly than any tech trend we've seen, if you think about what you need to do to get value out of Gen AI, it's well, you need to use your own data because mm -hmm. unless you're writing limericks about cats, like you yeah. know, you're, you're going to want to ground these AI models with your data, your context. So you need to connect to the data. Okay, well that sounds familiar. Yeah. You need to connect to the models. And how do you connect to, to LLMs in, a, in that type of context? Well, it's via API, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, connecting by APIs, that sounds familiar. Right, you need to then also think about the outputs that you get from these models. How do they then get uh, translated into action? Because it's one thing to have an output of a bunch of languages like, hey, you could do this, this, or this. It'd be nice if you could just actually go and do this, this, or this. So you want to take actions. And if you're going to take actions, you typically need yeah. to connect to an application or another data source or even you know, call an API somewhere. So you put all these things together and then you think about orchestrating the flow of all that, putting the data mm -hmm. in, building the context, calling the model, taking the action. That sounds like the world that we've been living in for a while. Yeah. And so this idea of Gen AI orchestration thing is going to become more prominent, but it's going to become pretty obvious that our you know, platform like ours, this is a building block, yeah. a foundational element for what you need to do. It's interesting, if you look at some of the, the trends just to validate that, then ask a question, I want to get to the point. A lot of the RAG or the retrieval augmentation generation is yeah. popular because that's what people can get their hands on, the yeah. data. And, and 
yeah, there's a use case, I can write a book, write a blog post, do some marketing material. Okay, great, productivity. But you're getting at something that's interesting. We've seen this movie before, you mentioned the, some of the highlights. Yep. Remember the old big data days, right? Like, ask good questions. Yep. Like, that was the innovation. Yep. Now at Generative AI, you can actually get to something quickly to get to the next thing quickly. So the, the progression is now accelerated on the generation side, meaning yep. if I get more data faster, soon that might even not even be a human in a loop, that just might be the Gen A working on itself. Okay, if that happens, what has to happen to make that work from a customer standpoint? How do I get the best of the Gen AI without going too over the top or getting too out in front of the wave, become drifting? Yeah. If you miss the wave, you lose the market opportunity. So take us through the timing of, of that. So yeah. it, it is a real delicate dance because, I mean, if you remember, we, we, we can remember this stuff, right? Like the, HD, high definition television, I think, like Sony came putting remember with an HD TV in like 1990. It's like, oh, look at that. It was like 15 years before it really it took, took the mainstream. Because all the pieces had to line up. I mean, the reality is today, you could try and just create completely autonomous systems using Gen AI technology, but you know, we're still human in the loop's probably a good idea at this point. But we can at least sort of forecast where things are going. And this is, this is where the delicate dance comes in, because I think you've got to be really smart about understanding where things are going, but yeah. then even smarter about yeah. charting the path to get there. So what we're telling companies, and we, you know, we're doing workshops, because we've, we, you know, we've kind of yeah. lived this life in Boomi where we've collected all this metadata over the years with our, you know, the, the integration patterns, and we've used this in machine learning models, so for us this is just the next step. But you know, look for the things that, that are, you can kind of bet on, and, what, and one of those things is, you are always going to need to connect to your, your data. You are going to need the, you need to irrigate the path, the, irrigate the canals into the data that you have, because that's going to be what's going to provide your specific context. So that's good work, that's high return on investment work. You are going to need those connections into the applications and user touch points that you have, mm -hmm. and then you're going to need a lot of flexibility to deal with all the volatility you're going to have in the Gen AI landscape, where there's going to be, like, like yeah. we look at all these models today and we're like, wow, yeah. you know, <laughs> OpenAI, chat GPT, GPT-4 is blowing my mind, and meanwhile OpenAI is saying, that's a joke, like wait for GPT-5, and it's going to be all these companies coming up. So, it's, it's the combination of like connect, do the, do the heavy lifting now to get you the stuff that's long term, like mm -hmm. connecting to your data, connecting the sources, and then building the flexibility so that you can plug and play. It's interesting, you know, we have a team up in San Francisco right now for RSA, big security conference. Mm -hmm. um, the theme coming out of there, Savannah, is I just want to slow down, there's no more tools. And we actually did some uh, research and proprietary research we reported last week that the tool vendors are actually increasing, not decreasing. This a is actually the question I was just going to ask A year about. ago, yeah. was, you'd say, okay, let's consolidate around the platform, but yet there's more tools coming out, there's more, because there's more problems. Mm -hmm. the, there's net new things, and the CrowdStrike was saying that. So exactly. the, the, the question here is that you're kind of bringing up the point where they, the customers are trying to learn what to do. Operationally, you can only go as fast as your ops. So on data, do you put the operational bottleneck out front as the pace car to figure out the system architecture to get Gen AI? Because what you're getting at here is that, okay, APIs run 80% of the internet traffic. Check, that's infrastructure, yep. critical infrastructure. But the observability and governance changes because now you say, what are you observing, one. And two, governance has to change because if data is freely available, you can't put the, the genie back in the bottle once the governance is not yeah, baked. Yeah. So take us through the impact of, the, the, the what does the customer have to learn table stakes to set up operational systems? Because I think we agree, data, okay, cool, check, yeah. API check, so what are they going to do? And I how mean, does observability I, 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 and I governance think, change? I think a reality, um, and this sort of folds back to some of the acquisition news we put out there, like, we, last year we ran a campaign talking about killing complexity, right, it was, it was mm -hmm. fun, it was fun, like, com like complexity is the enemy. I always felt a little bit uncomfortable because Complexity is not our enemy necessarily. Complexity can be our friend. Like, like imagine the complex problems that we solve, right? And that we live in a complex world. So the embracing the complexity and learning how to sort of dance with complexity, I'm, I'm talking a lot about dancing here, I'm not sure, it must be all hyped up. And but, limericks, I wonder yes. if you dance to these limericks, that's what it's, yeah. I don't know, maybe <laughs> a little bit of a rhythm problem there, but, um, but I think that, that uh, you know, that understanding that the, the heterogeneous landscape <laughs> yeah. of enterprises is just always crazy and is, is going to be that way and it's going to ebb and flow. 
accepting that is important. So when we're, when we're providing our platform to the market and providing the accompanying tooling to the market, it's done with the respect that we know the complexity of the organizations that we're dealing with. And if you take the data problem as an example, we're talking a lot this, you know, this week about what we're doing in the data management space. So, you know, I think, I think that AI and Gen AI specifically presents a really new, maybe not a new problem, but really underlines this problem of contextual data. So I think there's been mm -hmm. a lot of work, heavy lifting in organizations around consolidating the data, centralizing the data for data science purposes, which is really important work and has been, you know, but that's in service of, of, of a particular aim. Yeah. When you're working with Gen AI, and when you want to take action and get business value the most, like, you need to be really precise with the data. So, you know, I, I kind of, the way I've been characterizing it is, we've had this supply side view of the data world for a while, of, you know, get it, where is all the data, how can we get it centralized in the data lake and so on. I think we need to take the demand side view of the, of the data now, and really think about, because data is an interesting thing, right? This is in the book that we were talking yeah. about. Like, it, it, the, the economics of data, it doesn't have any value until it's consumed and used in, in a particular way, otherwise it's just sitting there. Yeah. In fact, it costs you money if it's just sitting it there. It costs you money, like is it an asset or is it a liability? Yeah. And so, if, if that's the case then, start with where you're going to realize value from the data, work back, and that even, that even says like, don't, maybe don't start with Gen AI, like start with a business problem work back to where Gen AI might come up with a novel way of solving it, but a lot of times there, as the data comes into it, you're going to need slices of data. And in fact, you might need less data, but more accurate data. Yeah, yeah. Right? We, we talked a little bit earlier about the density yeah. of the value in the, in the data. data. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think having that demand side view is important, so that's kind of how we're, we're looking at the world. So I would say that we have a broad view of the, of, of, we have a big picture, we have a, we have a platform story, but we're very focused on getting those slices where we're going to deliver business value as quickly as possible. Yeah. A couple things I kind of want to bring it back, but I'm really curious. So we, a lot of what we're talking about is AI readiness. Mm -hmm. Two things. One, can you define what AI readiness is in a little nugget? I think you've defined some of the steps there, but what does it really mean? And then what percentage, if you can gauge this, or even just in your own perspective, what percentage of the enterprises that you're dealing with today are actually AI ready? Yeah, I'd say it's a spectrum. It's not. It's not like a a, a Boolean thing, right? It's mm -hmm. not like you're you're either AI ready or you're not. And I think that one of the one of the things that's probably giving companies heartburn right now around AI is I just spent like more than a decade digitally transforming. Was it all for naught? Like now, yeah. is everything going to get thrown away with AI? And and the industry, we don't do ourselves any favors because everything's a silver bullet. You know, you don't need to code anymore. We got Gen AI. <laughs> well, how, you know, yeah. we'll see what see how that goes in in a few years when people have to maintain the code. But but in all yeah. seriousness, like I like my main reassuring message is if you've been following that digital transformation path yeah. where you've been actually digitizing, organizing, you know, creating those channels. Uh, getting your data in order, knowing where your data is, getting your processes automated. If you've been on that journey, you're going to be way more ready to take advantage of AI. Because you know, anyone could use the yeah. conversational interface, but the, the, the end goal is not AI. The end goal is getting the business value yeah. out of AI. And the, you're only as good as the data you have, too. Only as good as the yeah. data you have, and only as good as, the, as how quickly you can connect that data yeah. to the places that drive your business models and drive your, drive your revenue and, and productivity. Savannah and I have been talking on theCUBE over two years, almost two years now, Savannah, around uh, cloud. The thing I love about cloud is the horizontal scalability of the cloud. Well, okay, apply that to data. Not always intuitive to say, hey, let's horizontally scale our data. When it's traditionally been not scaling horizontally, mainly because of latency and, yeah. and risk. Like anything you know. in, in technology, like things have, yeah. are optimized along different dimensions. And yeah. I think that, as I was saying, I wrote a whole bit on this a while ago about like the 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 there's there's benefit in consolidating and centralizing yeah. the data in particular areas where you don't, you want to experiment, you want to get serendipity and so on. But when you are demand driven around the data, and you need the right data, the yeah. right place, the right time, it takes a different type of optimization. So we that's why I think you know if people are as we talk about data management, we again. It's just, these are how, this is how complex systems work. There's yeah. layers, layers of abstraction. <laughs> yeah. That's our focus, really, is like, how do yeah. we get the right data to the right place at the right time, whether that's building context for a model, whether that's taking the appropriate action based on the outputs of a model, whether that's just straight up 
doing an old-fashioned yeah. automation that, that a company needs. And a customer's environment matters too, because if they, there's no general purpose environment, not every customer has the same exact. Yeah. Well, like, and yeah, and so this is, this is I'm kind of curious, we're talking about, you know, I actually like what you brought up earlier about getting comfortable with the chaos to, to a degree and, and, <laughs> and embracing complexity as a, as a potential lever for innovation. Or There's a lot of ways to look at it. You're, you're advising and, and helping a lot of different types of companies navigate solutions right now in this space and, and navigate their AI readiness. How do you internally at Boomi tool select? Like John was mentioning, there's more and more tools coming all the time. How do you, how do you pick your winners? That's a great question. I mean, I think I think for us, you know, we make some we make some big bets. I think that we've got some really strong partnerships. Um, you know, we have a very strong partnership with AWS and, and very harmonious with a lot of the tooling that they provide in terms of our 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 platform. Um, I think, though, we also knowing how volatile the space is. This is maybe the biggest thesis of the book I'm putting out in the fall. Is how do you make those small bets and spread them broadly mm -hmm. so that we can experiment with all these new technologies? I mean, and we see, we see our role, Steve talked about this idea of an agent garden where you know, we, we talked about the Vianai powered uh, FinTalk agent that we're putting out yeah. that was in our keynote. But we see, for a lot of these companies that make, maybe have like unbelievably awesome tools that are used in a specific area, in general, they're going to need to be connected into these enterprise data points. They're going to need to be connected to the endpoints where they're going to actually take action and mm -hmm. really make their tools and technology shine. So that's where we're, we're trying to create more of an ecosystem so that those companies, number one, have a better route to market yeah. and a better route into the, into the enterprise in a, in, a, in, a, in, their, in a right context for their tools to add value. And at the same time, that helps us rather than us going into a room trying to build everything ourselves, like we can go help them, help provide a, uh, a place for them to run and, and generate value. Like I think it's a really strong place for us. We've always had a great platform around connecting things and, you know, and, and integrating things, but I think here's a place where that specialized yeah. knowledge to build those AI functions, we can really provide a fertile ground. Hey, Boomi means earth. Right, so we provide the earth, mm -hmm. we plant the seeds, yeah. <laughs> we grow the garden. Yeah, and make sure the high nutrient value in that data. Right. My final question before Savannah gets hers in is around um, Boomi's technology innovation strategy. You're the CTO. Um, IPaaS is still growing at 35% Kager, compound annual growth per year. That's just in the classic old school IPaaS integration platforms of service. You got the Gen AI market kicking in. Your clients have a lot of data, have a lot of workflows. That's their new IP, we've been saying that. Where does the TAM expansion go from an enablement? What technology levers are you guys going to be pulling to increase uh, the, the success TAM? Because you guys like successful companies that have been very successful over time, have a great community, loyal customer base, love the product. We've seen that movie before, Salesforce, ServiceNow, to name a few. Mm -hmm. Boomi has that same kind of characteristics. So you got a lot of opportunity with that built-in energy. What's the product and technology levers you see to connect the, 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 the TAM, increase the TAM? Again, I, I mean, I think we can speak in generics and say like, like Gen AI is like, it has all this potential everywhere. And you know, we're just careful to not go down a rabbit hole that's going to cost too much time. time. Time is the precious commodity here. But I think we do have a strategy around optionality, right? Like I think we're, I think we're getting, into, as is evidenced here, we have a great rhythm of like, mm -hmm. you know what, we, we have the ability to get quickly into market, get tight feedback loops. If you look at what we've done around our AI products, even since launch in the fall, like it feels like it's longer than that, but it was in the fall we launched Boomi GPT and it was just, it was a bit of a experiment around, here's one way that you could use Gen AI. To, it's probably the most obvious way to help generate these processes that are the core of our, what our customers build. And then we went out to the customer community and got all this feedback around what they would like to see and, and just creating those feedback loops and, and having the ability to deliver quickly, I think that I think maybe yeah. maybe it's not the one lever to pull, but yeah. it's the actual the it's having the optionality to pull a lot of levers yeah, yeah. without a long wait time. Right? Use, the, the, use product the, market the, fit. The slot machine doesn't need to spin for too long. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, product market fit. All right, last thing I'm going to give you a very short 30 seconds to plug that book you keep teasing that's coming oh. out in the fall. We'll follow up well, with you we're more here robustly. Well, we Boomi World, so I mean, yeah, so I have a book called Unbundling the Enterprise with my co-author Stephen Fishman that's coming out on IT Revolution. 
It was originally October 1st. I think they pulled it forward into September or something. But if you go and look up Unbundling the Enterprise, you'll find it. But in the meantime, you know, that can wait until September. Where uh, there's, I, I would invite everyone to go to boomy.com first and just see the- <laughs> well, uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Killing the clothes, spin, Matt. Spin Killing doctor. the clothes, Matt. <laughs> stick the landing here, yeah. Yeah, that, that was beautiful. I mean, you can have both. You can have both. You can have a glass of champagne in your hand as you stick that landing. There's, exactly. there's, there's the not, Or a book in your hand, I should say, rather. And the caviar, yes. You are my kind of person. Matt, thank you so much for okay. being here. This has been Thanks. a fantastic interview. Awesome. John, always a pleasure. And thank all of you for tuning in from home or wherever you might be hanging out today. We're here in Denver, Colorado. It's day two of Booming World. 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.